So what was the Southern Manifesto? Um, you know, when people think about it today, it is very much enshrouded in the mist of mythology and to the extent that they think about it at all. Um, we think of segregationists as having temporarily uh, sort of taken leave of their senses and that the Southern Manifesto is a screed that sounds like nothing so much as a latter-day rebel yell. Uh, you know, when describing the manifesto and its signatories, commentators say that uh, there, it was driven by fear, anger, and mental illness, uh, just about any emotion or condition that reduces or eliminates rational thought. We hear that the manifesto uh, was, it, that it seethed with anger, that it was, uh, that it bristled with angry words, and that it was, uh, had an ugly vehemence. People say about uh, the signers that they were fanatic segregationists. Um, this sort of line of thinking finds its height in Richard Kluger's Simple Justice, a magnificent work I hold in truly great admiration. Uh, nevertheless, on this score, he says that the Southern Manifesto was an ejaculation of bile and an orgiastic declaration of defiance. It's incredibly evocative language, uh, and if one reads it, it's hard to square uh, with what's actually there on the page. A close examination of the manifesto undermines the perception that Southern po politicians were universally blinded by rage. To the contrary, the drafters often advanced legal arguments opposing integration that contained considerably more nuance, subtlety, and sophistication than their detractors have allowed. Recovering those arguments in detail enables one to understand how the manifesto in significant ways should be viewed as the missing dissent to Brown versus Board of Education.